One of the criticisms I make is to what I refer to as, as more of a, of a libertarianish right. They have this idea that we should be let, people should be left alone, be able to do whatever they want to do. Government should keep our taxes down and keep our regulation flowing. and that we shouldn't get involved in the bedroom, we shouldn't get involved in cultural issues. That is not how traditional conservatives view the world. There is no such society that I'm aware of where we've had radical individualism and that it succeeds as a, as a culture. Here, I, I go back to the point. I am not a libertarian, Ron. I agree with you. You vote against everything. I don't vote against everything. I do vote for some spending. I do think sure. government has a role to play. I'm not saying necessarily earmarks are bad. I have had a lot of earmarks. In fact, I'm very proud of all the earmarks I put in bills. Some will reject what I have to say is a kind of big government conservatism, admitted Santorum in his 2005 book, It Takes a Family. Throughout Bush's debt-doubling agenda, No Child Left Behind, Medicare Plan D, you name it, Santorum was fully on board. And for that entire period, the Republican Party was completely off course. I said that if the, if the Supreme Court gives the right of individuals the right, the, the constitutional right to consensual sexual activity, then you have the right to incest, you have the right to all sorts of polygamy, you name it, you have the right to anything if it's consent. That if, you, if, the, if the standard is consent, then how do you rationally draw the line? You can't. And they aren't. And I don't believe that people should be empowered to do what pleases them the most. We have a responsibility beyond ourselves. That's the difference, I would argue, between the liberal view of the world and the conservative view of the world. I, I do believe they are anti-responsibility. I mean, their, their entire agenda is, I should be able to do whatever I want to do as long as no one gets hurt. Uh, let, me, let me get you the, the records on the floor of the United States Senate. That, uh, that, and, and we hear this in abortion. I should be able to do with my body whatever I want to do as long as I'm not hurt. Or I should be able to take drugs and do whatever I want to do as long as, as, long as I don't. I should be able to... Uh, you know, whatever, particularly in the area of sexual freedom uh, and, and, and personal issues, this is the mantra of the left, which is, I have a right to do what I want to do. And that is not the kind of freedom that uh, our founders envision. It is not the kind of freedom that makes up a society that, that is uh, devoted, as the subtitle of the book says, to the common good. But the definition of liberty, as our founders understood it, was freedom with responsibility. Well, responsibility to who? To themselves? No. It was a responsibility to others. It was responsibility to your family, but not just your family. It was responsibility to your neighbors and to your country. And we've sort of lost that edge. We have a whole society that is a, you know, you've heard the me generation. If it feels good, do it. Just do it. It's, a, it's an entire culture that focus on immediate gratification and the pursuit of happiness and personal pleasure. The idea that the only things that the, the states are prevented from doing are only things specifically established in the Constitution is wrong. Our country is based on a moral enterprise. Gay marriage is wrong. I will get involved because the states do not have the right to undermine the basic fundamental values that hold this country together. America is an ideal. It's not just a constitution. Senator, a I, I, Senator I, I read Colonel Householder's comments yesterday. Everything that you said, living in close proximity, sharing uh, bunks and showers, uh, being in close proximity, what th there is, he used exactly the same arguments you used to argue against racial integration of the military in the 1940s. Yeah, I, I understand that. And I, I know the whole gay community is trying, is trying to make this the new Civil Rights Act. It's not. It's not the same. You are, you are black by, by the color of your skin. You are not, uh, you know, uh, homosexual necessarily by, by uh, obviously, by the color of your skin. Now, I'm hopeful that some of the things we're seeing with respect to the nuclear program that the United States is involved with, which is, on occasion, scientists working on the nuclear program in Iran turn up dead. I think that's a wonderful thing. <laughs> I think we should send a very clear message that if you are a scientist from Russia or from North Korea or from Iran and you're going to work on the nuclear program to develop a nuclear bomb from Iran, you are not safe. And if people say, well, you can't go out and assassinate people, well, tell that to al yeah. Okay, We've done it. We've done it for an American citizen. Number one, Iran must not get a nuclear weapon, and we will go about whatever it takes to make sure that happens. I hope, I hope that some of the things that I've talked about here and, and new uh, thing that I've, I've been talking about for a while, which is covert activity, 
You know, there have been scientists turning up dead in Russia and in, in Iran. There have been computer viruses. There have been problems at their facility. I hope that the United States has been involved with that. The uh, Gitmo is, is essential to, to leave open. Uh, we have to use enhanced interrogation techniques, all enhanced inter interrogation techniques. Uh, it has been proven to be successful in gathering information that was criti critical for us uh, in, the, in the war against terror, and we need to continue that, that operation. Uh Former Pennsylvania Senator and Presidential hopeful Rick Santorum has taken on Senator John McCain on the subject of torture. Santorum said he, McCain, doesn't understand how enhanced interrogation works. Senator McCain was subjected to torture during his five years in captivity in North Vietnam. When McCain's spokeswoman was asked about the remarks by Santorum, she said, Who? Then McCain's aide, Mark Salter, said this, For pure blind stupidity, nobody beats Santorum. This is what their objective is. Their objective is to, in fact, create a calamity. This is what their theology teaches. They believe that it is their mission to take on the West. They don't hate us because of what we do or the policies we have. They hate us because of who we are and what we believe in. Who would be profiled? Well, the folks who are most likely to be committing these crimes. If you look at, I mean, obviously it was people. Obviously, Muslims would be a, would be someone you'd look at. Absolutely, those are the folks who are the radical Muslims are the people that that are committing these crimes. As we've by by and large, as well as younger males. I mean, these are things that not exclusively, but these are things that you profile to uh, to to find your best, uh, the most likely candidate. Congressman Hooks are here to, are, and I are here today to say that we have found weapons of mass destruction in Iraq, chemical weapons. Now, independent experts and the level-headed staggering in amazement tonight that deteriorated mustard gas canisters, at least 15 years old and as much as 18 years old, could be palmed off by desperate politicians as some kind of rationale for the deaths of 2,500 American servicemen and women in Iraq. Republican Senator Rick Santorum, down 18% in the polls in his own re-election bid in Pennsylvania, joined by the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, Representative Pete Hoekstra of Michigan, in pimping part of a two-month-old military intelligence report describing the existence of old munitions shells with chemical weapons that are degraded, unusable, and non-threatening. Uh, I, I do have concerns uh, about... Uh, obviously drug use and, and its impact on our society and and so I would say that the federal government uh, does have a role in in making sure that the drug use uh, that, that states don't go out and legalize drugs that there are there are drugs that are hazardous to people that do cause great harm to both to the individual as well as to society as a whole and the federal government has a role in making sure that those drugs are not in this country and not available and that, that people uh, you know who who use them illegally uh, are are held accountable have you ever ever broken the law senator well yeah i admitted uh you know back uh, back when i was running for the senate that when i was in college that i uh, i i smoked pot and that that was uh, something that it, you know, I did when I was in college. Good, kind of, yeah. You know, family values. And, uh, well, you make it strong. Would you continue to destroy the by sending non violent government into prison? Uh, <laughs> wow. The federal government doesn't do that. Can you Senator, do how do you get oh, oh. The position, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that you just believe in the sanctity of the innocence of life. How do you equate that with supporting the death penalty, given there are so many people? who actually are completely innocent. In fact, you know for a fact many innocent people are getting killed under this system, and you believe in the innocence of life and the sanctity and protection of life isn't the right consistent thing for you to do, well, I, to I, say I, enough. Yeah, I would say when there is certainty, then, and there are, there are occasions when there are, is certainty. When there is certainty, that's the case that uh, capital punishment can be used. Uh, you probably know in the last five or six years, this issue of, of, of teaching Darwinism in, in, in the classroom has been under a lot of scrutiny. And there's been a lot of, lot of there have been court cases and there have been school board decisions, state school boards debating whether to do this or not and, and whether we should teach intelligent design or all the other things. Well, how did that happen? Well, let me tell you the story of how it happened. No Child Left Behind is, is being debated today. And I offered an amendment that we should teach science in the classroom, not religion or anything else, that science and scientific theories should be the basis of all learning. And when it comes to the issue of biological evolution, you should teach the controversy. 
Yeah. That was a two-sentence amendment. Yeah. Final version of No Child Left Behind is in conference. They're debating the issues. One issue holds the conference two days. The language that I had. <laughs> they, Democrats would not back down. It was, it was the final issue. I give credit. I tip my hat to the chairman of the Education Committee in the House at the time who stood tall, made sure that language was in there, John Boehner. He made sure that language was in there. And as a result, school boards have had to review their curriculum on science, and that's why all these controversies have come up.